When I was younger, I used to play football in at Glen Thompson uh, for a while and probably fairly badly. But um, going into training, it was very a very barren landscape. It was um, bare hills that were largely cropped uh, and uh, eroding gullies that were just getting deeper and deeper. One of the events seared into my memory is the dust storm of early 1983 and, and to stand out there on the property with my wife Mary, brother Ken, and really watching uh, the landscape essentially blowing away in, in, in the wind and um, you know, just understanding that, um, that that level of environmental damage was not sustainable. Dad cleared um, our last patch of bullock trees down the back of our farm when I was a very small child. We used to hear the curlews call all the time and once that was gone, that was the end of the curlews. We never heard them again and my father often said that he wished he'd never cleared that patch of bush, but um, once it's gone, it's gone forever. Our economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of our environment. And unless we protect our biodiversity, which fundamentally underpins all the living things, that's the, the great Google of life, all the important bits and pieces out there, unless we actually pay attention to that and start to reinvest in that, uh, our economy can never win. We talk about reconciliation between peoples. Um, we also need to look at a reconciliation with the country itself. Um, the bush has a right to survive, um, and seems we have a lot of power as human beings, we need to make sure that um, we can help the bush survive. Um, so Habitat One for One provides an excellent opportunity for that to happen. Habitat 141 is an exciting new project which is about landscape change. Habitat 141 really is a vision to look at a broad swipe of, of the landscape from the coast to the far inland, essentially along longitude 141, which incidentally is just inside the Victorian South Australian border. So in a very, very compact area, um, you have everything what, what Australia is. You have really outback to ocean. That means you really are in in the desert north of the Murray, and you're down in uh, on the coast, nearly in, in in cold rainforest. The landscape we're dealing with is is best described as a fragmented landscape. It's a very altered landscape, with patches of really wonderful dynamic natural vegetation still remaining. And we're trying to sort of stay all right. Well, we've gone in here and we've modified it really dramatically with agriculture, but let's try and put back in some of these natural elements and connect it all the way back along there. The idea of Habitat 141 really was born from our activity with Project Time Marsh. There was this network of roadside vegetation that with a, a little bit of work uh, could really make a substantial connection that could reconnect the big desert with the little desert. So if we could join them together, it was obviously going to be very good uh, for the sustainability of both deserts. Connectivity started maybe 15, 20 years ago with creating very small linkages, very small wildlife corridors. We are a step further today, but what we really try to create here is, uh, is a permeable landscape. When we were children, uh, there was just so little vegetation on this place and uh, in fact there was the stump of one tree. Land clearing itself has been an issue for Australia over 200 years. Um, uh, we settled Australia, we developed primary industry as a key part of our exports, it remains a huge part of our national wealth. And so the challenge here is to say okay let's try and really return some of this to what it was while at the same time recognising that, you know, we've still got to grow food and we've still got to put, um, you know, clothes and, on our kids and send them to school. 
It's important that restoration and the economy uh, work together because one, it, if you don't have one without the other these days, it, it's, it, you, won't, you won't get anywhere. You need to engage with farmers, you need to engage with government, you need to engage with environmentalists to find a solution that solves not just the land clearing problem but also the ongoing need to use agricultural land to support our country. I think the farm is a, a critical part of that. Most farmers would want to leave the land better than they find it. And I think that's a great motivator for undertaking the works uh, that, that they're envisaging in 141. When I first started to garden, I thought this yard was huge. And um, because it's a double block, it wasn't just like everyone else had. But then within the blink of an eye, it wasn't big enough. So I stood at the front yard one day and looked out over the paddock and thought, wow, that paddock's got nothing in it and I could actually move over there and start gardening, which is exactly what we did. In terms of restoration, in the old days, we probably focused on one or two species. But the truth is that these these landscapes are about lots of things. So there's lots and lots of plant species, there's big things, there's wildflowers and there's stuff under the soil, there's grubs, there's worms, there's birds that fly in and out. And that's what we really got to be focused on. We've got a lot of well-proven methods now. So uh, right from broad scale direct seeding, the native grass layer through to direct seeding of trees and shrubs, through to the planting of seedlings so that we get the required structure. I feel very confident, we're properly resourced, that we can really achieve um, some high quality results. The next step for us is to um, gear up all of our machinery to get started. It'll be lovely, like we've done things in single rows until now. The really important thing about this program is that it's not simply a matter of um, just coming and putting some trees in the ground and going away. The critical nature of this is that the land is going to be managed into the future. The whole thing with Habitat 141 I think that's going to be so super exciting is that our landholders will be rewarded for protecting their bush. For farmers providing a small consistent flow of money to manage conservation land would be very welcome because growing and selling crops or livestock and so on go up and down from one year to the next you never know whether you're going to make a profit or not. Having that patch of scrub out in the back paddock valued by people from outside and and supported financially as a, as you would a small national park and, and that farmer runs it and is paid to run it would be a very useful and attractive thing for people to be involved in. We're going to engage the community at all levels, not just the property owners, but all sorts of community groups, businesses, local government, anybody who has an interest. It's so expansive that uh, the, the community will get a great deal of joy out of being involved in it. Greening Australia, um, it has connected with us, the traditional owners. Um, it does have a capacity right across the country with a huge number of people to contribute to revegetation programs. Greening Australia has worked in these landscapes for a long time. I think it has the ability and the resources and the understanding to, to bring together different groups of people to get them to work together. A model of getting local people who understand motivations and know local communities is a really good model. It has won the confidence of the community, of farming groups, environmental groups and governments. Um, it wouldn't have that level of confidence and support if it couldn't actually deliver on the ground. We, we only get certain chances in life to um, to do big gutsy things. Fortunately, some of us over time build up enough wealth to leave a mark that is beyond maybe ourselves or our family, but a mark for humanity.
What this means to me is we can work with a group of individuals to know that we really have had an impact on the landscape at real scale. You know, I've been alive 83 years and I have come to the realisation that an old fry, phrase, it's better to give than receive, is absolutely correct. And my wealth is really the reward I get from giving. I believe we have a moral imperative to do something about the country that has fed us, kept us going all this time. Um, but I think in a very selfish way, we need to recognise that restoring the land is for our own good, as well as the good of, of uh, the environment as a whole. One can really kick goals here. You can really kick goals with, with really not so much effort. We could really create um, um, large outcomes and, and I think that's, um, um, that's very exciting. This is the once in a lifetime opportunity to do something very, very special. We've got the seed, we can identify the land, we've got the tools, we've got the technology, we've got the capacity, we've got the people, we've got the intellectual property. Now we just need the resources.